and now all you vinyl varmints, all you uh, record collecting crew, have I got a box of records for you? And I saw miles and miles of Texas. And that is today's show, number 53, Cosmic Cowboys. Yeehaw. Oh. How you doing? We're back at Studio F, Shadow Man. Doing well. Yes, doing we well. had a couple uh, visits to over to Daddy Land at the Underground. underground yes. All. Maybe we'll do that again sometime. We're back at Studio F today. So all the machinery is here and everything. The mixing desks and the booths and the radiation Stop. chambers and, and all the other stuff that's required. But anyway, we were going to do a show today about Texas because we did some other geographical shows. We did Detroit and New York City Punk. And, but one of the groups I was going to feature very much turned out not to be from Texas. Mm -hmm. So I changed it to just Cosmic Cowboys. Yeah. But hey. if we are talking about Texas, I mean, we're going to start with this. I've shown this on our early rock and roll show. By the way, this is show number 53 today. But yes, this is the Chirping Crickets, a very early original runs with Buddy Holly. And this is where a lot of rock and roll starts in Texas. A huge influence sure as far does. as guitar-oriented rock and roll. The real original Buddy and laid down a very high standard for Texas rock and roll. And this is why I've had to feature at least one of Buddy. Now another early, early rock and roller, although this isn't a really early album, it's what I you know, it's what we have, right? And it's Sleepy LaBeef. Now, uh, this is probably like an 80s one when he was still around, obviously. I saw him at a rockabilly festival at uh, Harborfront up in Toronto in the 80s. It was great. The cuff of him in his pants, he had a big white pants suit on, like, you know, polyester or something. Ooh. And the cuff that was sewn underneath was bigger than most men. It was like, it was... <laughs> <laughs> it was quite a dynamic, quite an individual. Well, this is one of the reasons I wanted to do Texas, was because of the 13th floor elevators. I do, that's okay. That looks pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Rocky Erickson and the 13th floor elevators. Now, I read a 950-page a book on the 13th floor elevators. Now, their stuff was produced by a guy named Leland Rogers. Kenny Rogers' brother, and mm. he was uh, had this uh, record label, which we'll feature a bit more. And he produced a lot of this. And this is a uh, like not one of their albums they released at the time. This is full of outtakes and uh, demos and very early things. But their uh, song "You're Gonna Miss Me" is on the Nuggets album, and that was probably their biggest hit. I mean, they're on American Bandstand. They're like on a shindig and a hullabaloo. You're gonna, you're gonna miss me. You're gonna miss me. An American uh, bandstand. Yeah, I'd yeah. Like it's, on, it's, on YouTube. it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. It's some summer special or something. And, and later on, Rocky, who I've had the pleasure of seeing a couple times before he passed away, uh, probably about ten years ago, in Toronto. Excellent shows. But uh, Rocky had his troubles. Did some time in jail and institutions. But this one came out with the help of Stu Cook, who is the bass player from Credence, who is very devoted to this, the evil one. And a lot of this stuff, I walked with a zombie, and his, one of his most famous songs, uh, Two-Headed Dog, I've been working in the Kremlin on a two-headed dog. Bloody hammer. But yeah. Mm. And it's great because you go see them and people are so devoted that you see them singing Two-Headed Dog along with them. Like, you know, come on everybody, join in. And another person who had a big influence on, on getting uh, Rocky back into the public was Doug Sam. Now, Doug Sam was in the Sir Douglas Quintet. This was shown during our Dylan Oddity show because Bob Dylan's on this. And... Uh, 
back, kind of hiding there beside Dr. John, back in there behind Doug Sam, peeking out. Peekaboo! But, uh, yeah, he played at the Troubadour and places like that in California and would give Rocky like a half hour set to get him back out to the public. Did you know, Eric Daddy, that Rolling Stones just released Rolling Stones at the Elma Combo? Yes. Did you see that? Yes, because they had an album out called Love You Live from about 77, 78. One of the first things he did with Ronnie Wood. And one side of it was four songs from the Elma Combo. Oh, also 12 by 5 has just been remastered or something wow, again? Was that like a 60 year anniversary or something uh, like that? Ah, could be. More or something. Anyway, we were just talking about Leland Rogers. International Artists was his label. Now, this is the Bubble Puppy, Hot Smoke oh, and Sassafras. Yes. A wonderful 45. They were on the same label as the 13 Foil Vaders. And they're certainly a Texas psych bed. Yes, you got it. Mm, dear, 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 dear. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. <laughs> and I thought I brought this along too. It's a nice uh, piece of my heart. Janice Joplin and the holding company on the Columbia with matching sleeve. Isn't that nice? Love Big Brother. Of course, I always thought that. That looks pretty nice. nice. Favorite thing in Janice Joplin's career was that uh, Monterey Pop appearance doing Piece of My Heart. Fabulous. Sleep at the Wheel. So they're still around. Uh, they uh, really did that, like Bob Will's Texas swing kind of thing. And I saw Miles, Miles in Texas. And they put up tons of albums, wheeling and dealing. Hmm. Nice. It's a gamble. <laughs> Here is what, I, I've had this album for a long time, Commander Cody and the Lost Planet Airmen. Of course, Commander Cody, George Frayne, who is quite an artist in his own right. But, uh, and Commander Cody, of course, was also a serial. Good. Like, uh, Look at that. Like Flash Gordon. Look at that cover. Oh, I know, I know. But what I thought, I always thought, because they're playing at the Armadillo Hall, deep in the heart of Texas, all this, I thought they were from Texas. Turns out they're from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Ah. Uh, so I always wonder why I see these posters with the MC5 and the Stooges and everything, how Commander Cody got on the same bill. But uh, yeah. I'm going to hide behind this just for a second. I'll, I'll come back there. Okay. Okay, <laughs> cover our Jim Franklin. I thought it might have been somebody in Underground Cartoonist or something. Jim Franklin. But anyways, a shout out to a lovely cover. And. Commander Cody and the Lost Planet Airmen, Hot Licks, Cold Steel, and Trucker's Favorites. <laughs> All right. But I thought that's why we changed it to Cosmic Cowboy so we could include Commander Cody. Yes, and there's quite a bit about his artwork. George Frayne did some of our covers. I don't believe he did either one of these. But they're, they're quite a big band. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Hot Rod Lincoln, of course. Their version of that was what most people know them from. <laughs> so cheers, everybody. I'm having a glass of half Lone Star, of course, and half Texaco. I'm having coffee. <laughs> I just bought some coffee online. It was cheaper to buy it online than in the store. Well, what a marvelous state of affairs we're at currently in the year 20. 22. Yes, price of gasoline in our town, I believe, is two dollars and two cents a liter. Yeah, sounds and cheap I think to that's some about, people. Probably where it's going out. Oh, well, I hear the price of gas. I might be wrong. Is two cents a gallon in Venezuela? I think two cents a gallon. Yeah, it's always twenty bucks. Yeah. So today's show is okay. brought to you by Indian Road. I don't know if that's the same one you bought the uh, OG, Don. This is what I got, Indian Rose, and it smells like roses. It does. It smells more like roses before you light it up. I mean, it's, yes. it's, it's a funky smell. What were we just watching on the old goat? Uh, 
Sugar watch. We, we were going to comment. I, I thought that uh, Sugar Loaf was a Canadian band that did Green Eye Lady, but evidently not. I was wrong. And then there was a. What were they uh, before there was that? A, Wild Turkey was a band. He was mm -hmm. talking about, and I said that Glenn Cornick from Jethro Tull, the original Jethro Tull, was in Wild Turkey. I thought that was his band. No. So who was Sugarloaf before they became Sugarloaf? They had a oh, Chocolate Hair. Chocolate. That's according to Alexa. If you can believe. I don't have an Alexa, but there's one here. I have listening all the time. Studio F. She keeps me company. Well. Cosmic Cowboys. All right, what the fun. Indeed. You had your tea. You have been sentenced to death by the Aurora Models guillotine oh, replica. No. God, no, please. You have one more chance to save yourself. What is your favorite type of music? Uh, new country. Wrong.